This is Jazz Casual, and I'm Ralph Gleason. And the music that you are hearing is the Gildo Mahoney's Trio, who are obviously not Lambert Hendrix Vaughan, but who do the accompaniment, the most wonderful accompaniment that this trio has ever had. And Lambert Hendrix Vaughan are a vocal group who will be performing very shortly in the show. And in the meantime, we have an opportunity to talk to John Hendrix, their spokesman and the poet of jazz. John, welcome to Jazz Casual. Thank you, Ralph. Sure as a groove. Well, tell me, what, what, how do you describe to the mythical man from Mars exactly what Lambert Hendrix Vaughan do? Well, we listen to all the, all the great jazz records that, that uh, everybody else does, except that uh, if we like them, we try to give them word. For example, most people don't play musical instruments. So they may not understand the musical interpretation. So by putting words to them in the language that most people understand, we hope to give them a broader understanding of what the instrumentalist is actually saying. Do you have a particular idea in mind when you start to write the lyrics to a, to a jazz tune? No, I usually start from the name of the tune. And I try as much as possible to ask uh, you know, the guy who wrote it what he had in mind when, mm -hmm. he, when he named it. Usually when they name a tune, they usually have something definite in mind, a story or something. Uh, have you ever run into anyone who named a tune and didn't have a particular story in mind and oh, left it up to you? All the time. For example, Duke Ellington. Uh, Ask him, what in the world did you have in mind when you wrote that tune called Cottontail? He said, oh, that's just about a little rabbit running around. <laughs> <laughs> How did you start the whole idea of putting your own lyrics to jazz solos and jazz instrumentals? I got the idea from King Pleasure when I heard Moody's Mood for Love. Uh, I had been writing popular songs, well, unpopular songs at mm. that time. And uh, I was always int interested in jazz. I was singing. And when I heard Moody's Mood for Love, it opened up a whole new world for me. You didn't have to stop at the first 32 bars. You yeah. could keep going. Yeah. So I did Four Brothers, uh, Woody Herman's yeah. great thing. And uh, I got a record date for it. And uh, I told him that the guy I wanted to sing behind me, you know, to have the vocal group was Dave Lambert. Mm -hmm. So I met Dave, and we did the date. And then he, he asked me, he says, why don't you put some words to the big band things, you know, like Count Basie? And, yeah. I, and I said, oh, you're crazy. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine such yeah. a thing as that, you know. But Dave kept on and kept on. And finally, I began to, to think it might be a good idea. He finally got to me, you know. I mean, uh, we did it. And the result was sing a song of Basie. Well, how do you go about uh, working out in your mind the, the portions of a tune that you'll take and put lyrics to? Um, I usually try to do the whole thing, mm. you know, the entire arrangement. Most people, when they arrange, they do it uh, as a whole work, an yeah. entire work, except for solos. And then uh, I usually make them uh, like some, some person standing off the scene, speaking about the scene. Ah. It, it's like writing a play or a story. You have a plot, and it's, you have different kind of characters, and you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you think of these various voices, the, the various solos, as uh, characters in a plot. Oh, yes. As individual players for you to manipulate. Yes, it's like uh, uh, the opera idiom, really. Ah. Are these little jazz operas? They, they really sense? are, yes. Yeah. You think of it that way. Do you, do you uh, uh, have a particular mood given to you by the name of the song or the feeling of the song so that you speak in a certain way? Or do oh, yes. For example, uh, Sister Sadie. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Sadie's got to be a gospel type of thing because Sister Sadie is obviously a sister in the church. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to get a little theological in a secular way, I put it that way. <laughs> Which, uh, incidentally, brings up something that I have uh, of often thought, that jazz, in a sense, uh, is church music, and yet it's performed almost exclusively in what certainly uh, is very unchurch-like surroundings. Oh, boy, that's true. That's, uh, I, I always say, uh, uh, over 100 years ago, when they closed 
Storyville, I figured that the music might get out of those houses, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. Except that uh, nowadays, lately, in the last couple of years, they've been opening uh, places where they don't serve any alcoholic beverages, you know, coffee mm -hmm. houses. And uh, I'm very interested in this. I think it's a better atmosphere for the music, actually, than, than places where alcohol is served. Do you think that, that uh, through your lyrics and through the performances of uh, the group that you, uh, you uh, utter a special jazz message to the listeners? Well, I never try to think uh, in those terms. I hope that that's the result. Uh -huh. I don't really know what I'm doing at the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what happens with Lambert, uh, Lambert Hendricks Bovan? You have the, the group that accompanies you, and who else performs with you? We have uh, a saxophonist who is a great alto saxophone player who's lately been playing the soprano saxophone, a native San Francisco named Pony Poindexter. If you remember, on Sing a Song of Basie, there was a mm -hmm. Neil Hefty composition called Little Pony. Yeah. I hadn't met this man when I wrote that tune. But when I came to San Francisco and met him, I found that all the flattering things yeah. that I had said in that tune really fit. Yeah, but you wrote it about him without knowing him, and it fitted when you met him. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and he's with you now on, on the, uh, uh, with the trio and performing with you? Yes, he is. They do a tune together uh, that, that features everybody, especially our little drummer, Jimmy Smith. Uh, it's called Another Get Together. Would you like to hear it? I would. And then after, after we hear this tune, then will you and the, and the vocal trio come on and show us how some of these jazz operas in the short version work? Yes, we'll holler out loud. All right, crazy. <laughs> Thank you. 
walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize this could be the start of something big you're lunching at 21 and watching your diet Declining a Charlotte Bruce, accepting a big When I look clear blue sky, suddenly gal and guy This could be the start of something big There's no control in the unrolling of your fate, my friend Who knows what's written in the magic books But when I love her, you discover at the gate, my friend Batter in without a second look You're up in an aeroplane or dining at Sardis Or lying at Malibu alone in the sand You suddenly hear a bell and right away you can tell This could be the start of something great oh,
tries to play the kind of song when you hear it you got a sway she made it so soft and gentle too please the ear so people won't realize it's the blues that they hear and she Thank you. Thank you very, very kindly. We'd like to introduce a young lady who comes to us from Ceylon. Ceylon is an island nation off the southern tip of India where you can only hear jazz music by way of the voice of America. Talking about cementing East-West relations, the only Easterner singing jazz music is Miss Yolande Bavan, who sings Thad Jones's very intricate trumpet solo on this next number. Frank Foster's composition and arrangement for the Basie Band, provocatively titled Shiny Stockings. I walked with my baby, and I know in nothing flat. She's got something mellow, lots of fellows whistle at. When we go for a walk, I know soon as we're out. No shadow of doubt she's got lots to be proud of I'm, if I'm lucky to have someone so endowed a girl half as lovely would make lots of fellas proud I love all of her charms but one's really a ball I love those shiny stockings most of all Every man, when I bowed, it began. And one thing all men faced. A real shapely leg. Oh, really, 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 oh, yes. What do you think of that? Where do they think we're at? Oh, we've got to do business to be comfortable to make, but they didn't, for they ever even better than that. They don't get to start to dig another when we pass by. They get to look with a real rope, and I, yep, a woman has really got a will. And looking the very best, she must be up to par without fail. Otherwise, her old man's eyes will start to wander. So we got to pretty up. Go for prettiness, this I must confess. Dig a pretty face, dig a pretty dress, but they dig a pretty leg best. That's just the reason my stock and shine. Cause they appeal to that man of mine. I love it when he says I'm looking good. Cause I'm sudden long as I can keep it out of my and home and never look at other women. Cause I'll be so busy, be wanting as I got as fine as I am. Yes, sorry. She's fine, yes, my baby is fine, and she's all mine. What a lucky guy am I, I'm prouder than can be, that she only digs me, cause anyone can see she's a real sensation, yeah, one thing certain I know. I love her so, and I never let her go. I'm crazy about her charms, but run is a real ball. I love those shiny stockings best of all.
Here's one by John Coltrane. This one is called Cousin Mary. Cousin Mary. I 
and I was always wearing a frown Because my love had turned me down Then we met and you can bet I knew from the first You were my love, cause that's when the old great cloud burst My heart really flew the day you caught my eye I hope that we two will never say goodbye Clouds of gray have two linings when they're reversed I found your love and that's when the old great cloud burst Hey, baby, I'm gonna tell you about your love and any kissing and your hugging and your sweet total love for pretty baby. I want to be satisfied. Early and play, here comes the bride. Listen to me, baby, and I'm the one, baby, listen to my story. It's a perfectly true. I want to find your way to learn how to really go for you. Oh, baby, believe me, baby, because you certainly do. Could you tell me, really, really, tell me when you tell me that your father got a kind of crush?